Hello and welcome to Class Time CSET Math. I am Denise Bailey. And I am Shadeen Kessie. Yesterday we've looked at problem solving in geometry and trigonometry. Today we will be continuing with the same topic. Yes, and since exams are around the corner, we are going to divulge some secrets to mastering geometry and trigonometry multiple choice questions on your upcoming math paper. So you will want to pay close attention to this session. Let's begin. The objective is to solve multiple choice questions involving geometry and trigonometry. But before we go into finer details of what we'll be doing today, let's look at some tips for answering multiple choice items. The first tip is read the entire question carefully. Very important. You will need to get all the information that you need in order to answer the question. Reread the question and focus on what the question is asking. And then you need to highlight all relevant information needed to answer the question. That is good, Cassie. Eliminate wrong answers. Mm -hmm. And then decide on your plan. So if you notice, we are actually going through some of the same attempts for mm -hmm. problem solving. That is true. Right. Read and understand. You and formulate a plan. Yes. Then you action the plan. Then you guess at, you check. Okay. Apply your strategy, which is, would be the same as action in the plan. Yes, yes. And then you check, check. your work. And most importantly, <laughs> you need to indicate your answer most by definitely. shading with the appropriate pencil. Yes, at the appropriate number, at the appropriate. as indicated on the paper. Yes. Okay, good. good. Right. So a breakdown of the topics that are, that's covered under the unit that is labeled geometry and trigonometry. It states that students should be able to, and these are the objectives that we'll be clarifying today, construct lines, angles, and polygons using appropriate geometrical instruments. We are also going to be describing a transformation given an object and its image. We are going to be using trigonometric ratios in the solution of right angled triangles. Okay. And represent relevant position of two points given the bearing of one point with respect to the other. Not last, solve problem, solve practical problems involving heights and distances in three-dimensional situations. We are to note, however, um, Shadeen, that these are just a few of the objectives that are actually covered under the unit that's, that's titled geometry and trigonometry. So these are just a few of the objectives that yes. we are covering. In addition to that, these objectives were taken directly from the CSEC oh, yes. curriculum. Yes. So they are going to be tested somewhat. Thank you very much for that reminder. So we go to our question one. Um, a boat was traveling on a bearing of 270 degrees. And the question is, what direction was it traveling? It's a multiple choice. All right, it's a multiple choice, and looking at it, mm -hmm. I see bearing mm -hmm. jumping out at me. So I see bearing, so we are trying to highlight the important information, and I also see 270 degrees. Yes, so yes. after reading the question, before even going into what a solution is, mm -hmm. I look at the suggested solutions that are there to see what I'm required to do. Okay. Right. So in multiple choice questions, not all the time we are required to go through the full length of working out. That's right? true. Right. So it depends on what our solution is requiring of us. Okay. So after reading the question, I look at my solutions okay. to see. So my solutions are saying west, east north 
and south. Yes. What do I do with that? I have these solutions. <laughs> I have bearing. I have yes. 270 degrees. Well, I would have to have some considerations. When I talk about bearings and I'm talking about the direction, then the solution set does not help me much. Right. So I'd have to go back to what are some considerations? Mm -hmm. All right. So I might want to think of a plan okay and thinking of a plan then it gives me direction that okay. came out so yes. i would want to make a representation of. of 270 degrees okay okay so a representation of 270 degrees requires the cardinal points yes. or a representation yes. of it and then are the compass mm -hmm. and then we see where 270 200. question 270 degrees um, we have we have the direction. If we are going reading the compass using the cardinal points, thinking about bearing, does it matter the direction in which we go in order to come up with our solution? Right. Solution? So in bearing, okay. our bearings, mm -hmm. the direction is very important. So if I take an anti-clockwise direction or a counterclockwise direction then that will be an incorrect solution that would because, mean I go from north to west right oh. because bearings is measured in a clockwise, clockwise. direction okay. Okay. okay so that is important mm -hmm. so looking at it measuring in a clockwise direction where will 270 degrees fall well what i know is that in the first in the first i have 90 degrees first quarter first quarter yes. there's 90 degrees when i go down to the second quarter i am going to have 180 degrees so therefore the 270 degrees i believe would come somewhere around on the left hand side of the compass uh -huh. exactly where west lies exactly where west lies and that is what is illustrated there for us the 90 another 90 degrees added to another 90 degree um 370 degrees from north yes three 270 degrees from, from north in a clockwise direction Thank you. so that would mean that our answer west a west thank you yes so 270 degrees will in what direction is this traveling west western direction thank you so let's go oh question two right so this time mm -hmm. looking at the question i'm not required <laughs> to do a diagram right no it's given but it is given. i can fit my information on the diagram if needs be so let's read the question yes. carefully yes in the diagram a, B, and C, D mm -hmm. are parallel, okay. right? So you are showing them both parallel lines, right? Yes. Which of the following best describes the relation between X and Y? Yes. That relationship is now formed be because line A, B, and C, D has been intersected by... A transversal. A, okay. Yes. And then we see some angle properties coming, coming out. out. Okay. Now, do not be distracted by our solutions being represented in algebraic form. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Do not. We are still focusing on trigonometry and geometry. Okay. Thank you. No. Let's examine the diagram mm -hmm. carefully. We would have identified the parallel lines. Go ahead and show them. A, B, C, D, right. parallel lines. And it is bisected by a transversal or intersected yes. rather by a transversal. And we can see the angles X and X Y, and being, y formed. being formed there. Mm -hmm. Now for us or what we should be thinking about mm -hmm. is the list of properties that arise when we think about angles formed by intersecting lines and mm -hmm. thinking about that then we will see a relationship coming out yes right yes and there are some that we can eliminate but jumping to the solution we will know that x mm -hmm. and y are equal because they are alternate angles, angles. Yes. some persons refer to them as being z, z angles, angles and yes. it, depending on the direction or the orientation of, of the, the diagram, diagram it could be the n angles yes right so because alternate angles are equal 
let's examine our solution to sense. see mm -hmm. which will say that x is equal to y. And when I look at it, b jumps out at me because right. it explicitly states that x is equal to y. And so the answer would therefore be b, x is equal to y. Correct. Okay. Not bad, multiple choice. So here we have another question. The image of a point P, negative two, three, under the, a translation three, four is, and we have our solution set that's given. No, read it. You have read the question carefully. Mm -hmm. What are the important information that we need to get from the question? When I look at this, I see the, the coordinates for point P, that's given. And yes, that is given. And I see the vector under which the translation has taken place. Right. So, so I'm to use that information now to help me to identify where what the new coordinates would be under that translation. Right. So okay. we would have been given the image. Yes. P. We are to find the image given the object. Okay. Right. So yes. we are to find yes. the image given the object. Now, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And these are information that we need to try and remember with adequate practice. Mm -hmm. Practice. <laughs> then we should be able to remember these key information. Sure. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, given the, the object yes. and the vector, in yes. order to find the image, then we do an addition right there. Yes. Right. So go ahead and walk them through. Okay. Adding. So looking at the looking at the object, we got a uh, we got the coordinate, and we have rewritten the coordinate as a vector in order for us to have the addition of the two vectors to carry out the operation. To, in order to carry yeah. out the operation, which, which takes us clearly when we would have done our addition, it's clearly stated there. My answer would be D. Because My it must be written as a point, point and not as a vector. Not as a vector. Yes. So even though we would have used the vector to do that, that operation, the addition that is here, it's requiring us to have a coordinate. And for us, the answer would be D. One other thing that we need to remember too, mm -hmm. Denise, is that when we are doing multiple choice question. Unfortunately, we, we are not allowed to use a calculator. That's, that's so, true. So, viewers, students, please remember your operation on integer. Yes. So, that's why when we add negative 2 add and 2, two 3, we yes, we positive get one. 1. Yes. yes. Thanks. Thanks for that reminder. And even though we go, we are going through the multiple choice questions um, in a little bit more detail than you would actually be going through as you do the exams. Remember that you have a specific time that is allotted for for completing the multiple choice. So we have to budget our time wisely in order to comfortably um, complete all the items that are there. On an average, it is suggested that one question will take a minute and a half to somewhere there, somewhere mm -hmm. there about. But there are questions that might take you a few more minutes than the minute and a half that's averaged. And then there are some questions that by just reading and looking at it, exactly. you'll take less than a minute to exactly. solve. So the time will compensate for each other awesome. right there. Awesome. And one of the tips that I would like to, to interject here is that if we recognize that we are spending much time, too much time on an item that we have, are we going to spend three, four, five, six minutes in order to battle that one out? No, no. What we should do is just put a little mark there to highlight it to say that you would have incomplete. Looked, yes, yes, and then you continue and come back to that question. Yes, and and what happens is this: there are times then that other questions that would have come later down in the multiple choice will help you to better understand and clarify a question that you would have had to walk away from. So don't get don't get confused flustered. and don't get flustered. Just take your time and go through. Move along. Okay. Right. So let us go. Here we have question four. In the right angle triangle above, tan theta is, and this is calling us to examine a diagram that has already been given to us. Yes. Okay. 
Right. So, so they they would have given us a diagram mm -hmm. and we are to identify what operation we are to carry out in mm -hmm. order to get a value for tan theater. Mm -hmm. But it did not ask us for a value for tan, tan theater. It no. did not say what degrees are, whatever. So what mm -hmm. do we need to do? So we need to examine the triangle. We have the, the, the angle of focus. That's the angle of focus. We also have to identify the type of th um, the type of triangle that is there and it's indicated by the square corner that is that is there so we have tan um theta theta and we have because this is the angle of focus focus opposite that angle we can identify opposite we can identify the hypotenuse simply because it is a right angle triangle it's opposite to the right, to the right angle, angle and we also are able to identify the, the adjacent, adjacent side. Now, all we'd have to do is to review the trig ratios that we have. We, we know them. We know them all. Some persons are able to sing so, them. Yes, yes, yes. But just make a quick representation of what each um, ratio mm -hmm. represents, right? In order to eliminate your possibility of making a mistake. Yes. And move with that. Okay. So tan theta would be equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Mm -hmm. Cos so the opposite and the adjacent would be the cause. Opposite, the, sorry, opposite and, and adjacent would, would be, be 10. 10. So the opposite is 5 and adjacent would be 12. And so therefore, and so therefore, looking at, after we have looked through this question, we see that it is 5 upon 12. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not we bad. can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Yes. Our fifth question we have a representation here, a diagram, and we want to find out how many triangles congruent to ADE would be needed to cover rectangle ABCD entirely. I'm thinking of, of area, total coverage. Right. Okay, congruent, same sized, same sized triangle. Yes? Yes, we could use the area for formula, which will take a little bit more mm -hmm. working out. And if you're a visual person, <laughs> you can actually do replicas of the triangle which that is, is which given, is right. which will help you to move a little bit faster. Okay, so right? the first triangle there, representation, and of course, a that is a congruent um, triangle. This is a third congruent yes. triangle to the first fourth fifth and the sixth so when they say how many would be needed to totally cover um to cover rectangle a b c d entirely i'm seeing six rectangles that yes. are congruent to the first yeah. a d b a d e right so okay. if it, it doesn't mean that if you had gone ahead to find the area, you would have gotten the incorrect Not at all. Not at answer. all. No, but it would have taken a little, a bit little more time. time. Yes. And that, this is what I enjoy. There are many solution parts. It's what you're more comfortable with, you're most comfortable with. Yes. And with which allows, with multiple choice, you don't need to be showing working. You just need to be um, efficient in finding your answer. Yes. Okay. So six, that's our answer. Question six. A boy stands, and this question is one of those questions that <laughs> will take you a little bit more than a minute and a half. Yes. Right? Because you have to read, interpret, and then come up with a plan. Yes. A boy stands 12 meters from the foot of a building and observes the angle of elevation of the top of the building. The height of the building is approximately. Mm -hmm. So there is a visual representation of the information that is given. What you need to do now is to examine the diagram carefully mm -hmm. and try to decipher. Uh, oh, decipher, decipher which uh, of the answers would yeah. be most applicable. Okay, in finding the height. So we are looking at 
the height we have the height of the young we have the height of the young man which is 1.6 meters represented here right. okay so how do we find the height as represented by this triangle with a Angle right of, angle triangle with a 40 degree angle of elevation uh -huh. all right so if we were to all right the height of the boy is it gives a, a rectangle right yes. so where the boy is is the that length or that distance is equal to highlight there um this side okay okay yes right so right away we would have Take known one, one that one, one the point height from here from the base to the height of the boy reflecting here would be 1.6 meters so what we need to find now is the distance there that is represented by the angle of elevation okay right mm -hmm. and it goes back to our right angle or trig ratios yes. for the right angle yes. triangles using that we can identify the opposite mm -hmm. the adjacent and the hypotenuse mm -hmm. right and using that information given the angle or the angle that is being identified yes then we can say that we would use opposite divided by the, the adjacent, adjacent because okay. 12 meters there would also be equal to 12 meters the line of sight mm -hmm. yes okay so therefore when looking by looking at all of that no we recognize that we're using tan um the yes. height here that is what we're we're trying to find and so the boy's height added to the angle of elevation represented by the trig ratio that you have identified would give us um 1.6 added to 12 tan 40 as the height of the building yes that is correct okay okay not bad not bad but what i see that is required is that we need to pay attention to the information that is given read all of the question in order to fully um be able to answer the question right okay so here we have another in a triangle abc angle a equals x degrees and angle b equals 2x degrees mm -hmm. what is the size of angle c mm -hmm. so in a triangle what do you know about a triangle what does a triangle looks like mm -hmm. yes yeah, so we need to do a quick sketch you are allowed to do that right yes yes it's Rough your work. paper yes <laughs> you do yes. a quick, quick sketch of the triangle if you are having problems coming up with that Put the okay. information that you are given inside a triangle and what is it that you are required to find. Yes, we understand that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle would be 180. So what this is saying to me is that angle C added to angle B, which is 2x, um, 2x degrees, degrees, added to angle A, which is x degree, all of that, the sum would be 180. And I would have had two pieces of information, two pieces of information um, right. to, to be used in order to solve the problem. So we could do our substitution, mm -hmm. right? Add those and then um, transpose in order to find the value of angle C. What is important to note for me here, Shadeen, is how the answer, the solution sets are represented. Um, if you look at the solution set, you would recognize that there is no one definite angle. Um, you have a combination, a combination of, of, of how it is the answer could be represented. Or an expression. And, or an expression. Right. So, so we could go ahead and eliminate some of the options that are there. We mm -hmm. are not given enough information to select a 45 degree or a 60 degree. So what we could go ahead and do is to eliminate... 45 and 60 and then we will be left with these two options C and D and based on working out We will see that C would be would the have been the correct answer. answer. Okay, let's stick a pin right here Class time continues with more after this break
welcome back to class time C Sigma. We've been going through some geometry and trigonometry multiple choice question. Let's continue. And we continue on question eight. Good. Here we have a diagram. Pay attention to the, the information on the diagram. And the diagram above, not drawn to scale, shows that the angle of depression of, of a point X from Z is 30 degrees. If X is 10 meters from Y, the height of YX in meters is... That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. <laughs> yes. Right. But it's represented there on the diagram for it us. It is represented there, but for some persons not seeing the person, because we are talking about angle of depression, yes. or not seeing a person <laughs> being represented, yes. Yes. that might be, hey, what are they talking about? Exactly. Where is this angle? But the angle is there. Represented there. It's represented degrees. there. Yes. And we need to note that it's not drawn to scale. It means, therefore, that you can cannot go ahead and just take out your protractor and measure to find whatever information, no measurement, no measurement at all. So it is based on okay. calculations. Now, we are familiar with angle of depression. Mm -hmm. They say angle of elevation and depression. depression. In this case, we are focusing on depression. Mm -hmm. So we can go ahead and examine our diagram and highlight some information that okay. we would have known from previous lessons with depression and fit that in there. Okay. Now, some information is given and we could complete the figure. Okay. We could have gone that route, but there are multiple solution pathway. Okay. So if this angle here 30 degrees. is 30 degrees, then we can see alternate angles being formed. Mm -hmm. So alternate angles, I remember a question we before. We did that question before, yes. Are equal. Yes. So if this is 30, we can... Angle at, at it, x. The angle at x right here will also be, be 30, 30 degrees. degrees. So there is another piece of information that we would have garnered from the question. Now, what is it that we are required to find? We are to find the height yes. of YZ. So we need to find this side. There is also this symbol right here, which tells us that we are working with a right, right angle, angle triangle. triangle. Good. And we are already familiar with our trig ratios. So yes. what we need to go ahead and do is to insert what we know about right angle triangles. So we can identify the um, hypotenuse right here. That's correct. We can also, if this angle is 30 degrees mm -hmm. and this is the identified angle that we are working with, mm -hmm. we can say that over this side would be the opposite side. Exactly. And X, Y, 10 meters, 10 meters would be the adjacent side. And we are required to find the opposite side. We are required okay. to find the opposite, opposite 30 degrees at X. Right. Okay. So we have 30 degrees. We need to find here, and we also know the length of the adjacent side. Awesome. So we do have enough information to use opposite divided by adjacent, mm -hmm. and the ratio that deals with that aspect of it would be a tan ratio. Okay, so that's so. So by looking at it, no other computation or so we would actually need because it would be the right. tan ratio the, based on the answers the that are given, yes, the solution that set are, that's given right there. We can eliminate a, mm -hmm. C, and D. But if you don't want to do that, it's okay to do your working out mm -hmm. as you have there on the board and come up with your... And sometimes it's not that we're not okay. The ch chances are persons might not have seen the information because you have exam jitters and all of that. So sometimes we're not making the connections as quickly because sometimes we get under pressure. That is okay. That's okay. That is okay. Do your, do your calculations just the same and take it from there. You right. have time, just use the time efficiently in order to complete your multiple choice questions. Good. Okay. So the answer that we would have seen, of course, it's B, 10, tan, 30 degrees. Yes. Okay, good. 
Question nine. We are given a diagram mm -hmm. and it says in the figure, the line CD is the image of AB after, and they give us a list of yes um, translations res um, transformation which, uh, yes. that we are to select which is correct no it's gonna be well i wouldn't say <laughs> impossible but it's gonna be time consuming to actually go through and list all the information that you know about rotation, rotation enlargement, enlargement mm -hmm, translation, translation and, and reflection. reflection yes right but even though it's time consuming, there are certain checks that you are going to be making in order to help you to select a correct answer. Okay. So what we will do is to examine our responses that are given and eliminate. Okay, based on the diagram that is represented right. here. So when I look at the diagram, compare the information I get to and then move forward. Okay. Is this a rotation? If we are having, if it's a rotation, what would be some of some points to consider? Well, the orientation okay. will change, mm -hmm. right? And we don't see that, so we can eliminate, right? The orientation, the orientation changes, yes. So it would be okay. in another direction okay. or something okay. like that. And then for the enlargement. A negative course, that's one a, yes. means that it, it will get a little bit smaller. That's right. Right? On a different side of the graph. Yes, yes. If it were a translation by a vector, we could go and we could use, use the, the vector. movements to see where it will take us. And CD, then, yes, yes, would not be in line with the vector so that is there. A negative, we are going in a different other direction. direction. Yes, yes. And for a reflection, no, we need to examine to see whether or not the object and the image are mm -hmm. equal distance from away from a mirror a line and identified mirror, mirror line. line okay mm -hmm. and because in this response it suggests that why why through the y-axis we could examine to see if they are equal distance from the y-axis okay and when we go ahead and do that because cd is um is the image of a b then, of course, C is two units away from the mirror line. Yes. And A is two units away from the mirror line in the opposite direction mm -hmm. or across the, um, the mirror line, which is the y-axis. Right. Okay. So that would be equidistance apart. And we could try it for D as well. Mm -hmm. And D would have been five units from the mirror line mm -hmm. and B would have been the same five units, units from the mirror line. Does the orientation changes? Mm, okay. You know, so we'd examine those and see what the solution would be. Based on what we have looked at, all of what we would have looked at, I'm seeing that D, of course, would have been, because we would have gone through um, identifying, speaking about the different um, transformations. transformations. And of course, we see that. Um, what we have there is a reflection in the y-axis, which the answer would have been D. D. Yes. Okay. Okay. We can go. We are okay with that. And so we come to question 10. Now, because it is multiple choice, because it is multiple choice, remember that it is a snippet or a compilation of the topics that we would have been covering um, across geometry and transformation. And so you would see that there are... Geometry and, and trigonometry. Trigonometry, thank you very yes. much. Yes, um, geometry and trigonometry. And so you would see different topics coming out at you. And that is why it is important for us to pay attention when the topics are being done, when whatever it is we don't understand, you are to review it. Don't take it for granted that because it is... Um, multiple choice you can just pick an answer that may not work in your favor yes okay let's read question, question 10. 10. we are given another diagram mm -hmm. yes and in the figure above abc is in the figure above abc is a triangle in which a D is equal to BD, which mm -hmm. is also equal to CD. CD. Mm -hmm. The angle ABC is, and the angle 
that we need to find, we must try and identify that angle okay. on the diagram. Okay. Right okay. before, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are a few questions that you need to ask yourself while you, uh, while you are working through this question. Some of these are how many triangles are in the diagram? Denise. There are three triangles in the there diagram. There are three triangles in the diagram. One here, one here, and, and the, the entire, entire diagram. Okay. Right. Yes. What type of triangles are shown? I am seeing the two inside triangles. The two inside triangles are right angle triangles. Um, angle, um, triangle A, B, D, and triangle. They are isosceles triangles. These two sides here are equal, so they okay. would. Okay. They did okay. not yes. insert the, the right square angle. corner. Yes, that is true. Show. That is true. Please right. forgive me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So we can see two isosceles triangles, triangles. Mm -hmm. and then this one. We are not given any length, so it could be scaling. Either of, yes. Right. Yes. We what might we do see know is those lengths right are angles equal. coming out later, depending on the size of the angles That's that true. we come up with. Mm -hmm. We can use the information that we have in order to make some Fill in some, some in additional yeah. information. So, so this is what we have, yes. One of the things that we need to know, the, the properties of triangles. That's the, the, right. Of the each triangle, right? Yes, each yes. Each triangle or type of triangle have a unique property. That's why they are given the names. <laughs> yes. If these two sides are equal, That's right. then, then we they... can conclude that the base angles would be equal. So you need to turn the triangle in your mind, or you yes, can turn your paper yes, if you want yes. to feel more comfortable, then the base angles would be equal. That's correct. So if this angle here at C, C is 50, is 50, then the angle C, um, C, B, D, D would also so be, be equal to 50. Okay, yes. Right, and the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180, 180. Yes. so if we have 50 and another 50, then 100. here would be 80. 80. Angles on a straight line, if right here is 80, then the adjacent Ten, mm -hmm. yes, would be 100, 100 degrees. degrees. Now, if we know that this angle here is 100 degrees, <laughs> Then, yes, it's quite a bit yes. of going yes. through. Then, if one angle, we can identify that these two, two sides are, are equal. equal. Yes. So, the base angles would be equal. So, it's 100 from 180 degrees. divided by 2. Okay. So, that would give us a 40 degree here at DAB and a 40 degree at a, a, B, D. D. Okay. So we would have gotten these two angles. This one would be 40. This one would be 50. And we are asked to find angle A, B, B. C. Okay. Angle A, B, C. And looking after we would have done so all of that, looking through the angle, looking through the triangle, we can identify that angle a, B, C is a composition of two angles, right? Right. So it or, is important <laughs> that we note or identify yes. it's a combination of two because 40 is listed yes. as a possible answer and 50, 50 is, is also, also listed. listed. But are those the answers? No. No. So because it is a combination, then what we need to do is to add both angles right there in order to get the size of angle A, B, C. And I'm looking also at, if I should look at triangle A, B, C, I know, I see based on our conversation that the angle formed at C is 50, the angle formed at A is 40, and so that would give me 50 added to 40, 40 is 90, 90, and the sum of the interior angles would be 180. And so I could take it from that perspective just the like same. That. Yeah. Yes. And so after we've gone through all of that, our answer, the angle ABC is 90 degrees. Meaning, therefore, that triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. triangle. Let's continue. So here we have 
another question. It's a little different from what we would have done before. The diagram below of a the diagram below is of a construction with center A and arc BC is shown. With center B and the same radius, the arc PCQ is drawn. All right, so mm -hmm. some persons might think that it is rather impossible to be <laughs> testing construction on a multiple choice um, paper. True, but true. this question mm -hmm. will prove that it is not impossible at okay. all. So while some persons take it for granted and just go ahead and randomly swing arcs and mm -hmm. measure and come up with their the angle that they are required to construct. Here we are given a diagram which we are required to examine it carefully. In light of the information that in is above. In light of the information mm -hmm. that's given and say what angle is being constructed right here. Okay. Now, highlighting the important information. Thank you. We are given a center. Mm -hmm. We are also told that an arc... BC is drawn mm -hmm. and with the center, same radius. Exactly. And we can see two radii mm -hmm. in the diagram, right? And some persons take it for granted or they might not have been informed somewhere along the line that when we actually, when we swing an arc, an in, arc mm -hmm. is a part of the circumference of a of the circle. circle. Yes. So it's really that we were going to draw a circle, but we did the arc of Instead. the circle. Mm -hmm. That's why we are getting radius yes. or you. two radii coming out in the question. Mm -hmm. Because what does a radius have to do with construction? construction. I was never told <laughs> that before, right? Yes, yes. But that would have been the intention. No. Equal a radius will suggest that we are equal, equal distance, distance from, from, the the cent mm. from the center of the circle the, mm -hmm. or the center. They didn't say circle, but the from point there represents, represents the, the center. center of a circle. And with that information, both sides, both radii being equal, then we can conclude that we are actually drawing or constructing a 60, 60 degree, degree angle. And what is important for us to note is that in order for us to have all this information, we would have ha had, had to be actively constructing angles, polygons, whatever it is, using the instruments in order to do the construction. Right. It is upon doing those Practice. that is, thank you, coming, coming back to that. It's upon doing those that we are able to make the generalization. Yes. Yes. Most so definitely. this is one of the questions that would not really take a lot of time still, you know. Shouldn't. Should not. Okay. So here we are now at question 12. Yes. A ship sailed. 80 kilometers due eight. eight kilometers due east from A to B. It then sailed six kilometers due north to C. Which diagram below best represents the path of the ship? All right, so sailed due mm -hmm. from those words are telling me that we are looking at a bearings question. And I'm seeing the card um, north. And I'm north, right. East. Most importantly, the north. north. The north, right. yes. So we are looking at a bearings question, but this time our solution is represented in diagram format. Yes. Right? Knowing the information that you should have when dealing with bearings, then we can go ahead and examine the solutions, examine and eliminate as we move along. Right? So a ship sailed... Eight a. kilometers mm -hmm. due east. Yes. East would be 90 degrees of, um, from north. From north, yes. Right? So we know that our north line points in an upward direction. Yes. As is represented here in on all, all the, the diagrams. diagrams. Yes. Now, east would be to the 90 so degrees. Would have been to the right of... In a clockwise direction. Yes, yes. Right. But they say sailing east, we go... Eight, eight kilometers so, so we could just quickly browse through to see which of those are going eight. eight so we can eliminate a because that's a six kilometers okay good no the next information that we need to look at is it sailed 
six, six kilometers uh -huh. due north to sea. Yes, yes, due north to sea. Looking at it, um, due north to sea, it means that we'll go up north and here represented six kilometers. D has six kil kilometers south. And, and this ship just stopped, stopped at right B. There. So just looking at it, um, we okay. see that C is, is our, our, solution. our solution. Is our solution. It is time for our second break, but don't go far because we still have a few more tips for you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to class time. We've been giving you geometry and trigonometry multiple choice exam tips and we have just a few more to go. So we we are back at our multiple choice questions and we are at question 13. Here we have a diagram. We are given the diagram and it says AB is parallel to EC. Calculate um, the angle A, B, B, D, E. Yes. So we, we have the information and the representation there. Highlighted for you, we see that angle B is 40 degrees. The information we had is that we have parallel lines. Yes. Yes. So what we need to do is to identify the pair of parallel lines. Okay. And we a, see B. that A, B and e. E, C. Yes. Those, those two lines are parallel, mm -hmm. right? And then observing the diagram carefully, you will notice that it is intersected by a transversal. 
BD. BD. Mm -hmm. Forming the angle 40 degrees right there. Yes. And yes. it goes back to our angle property. Right, so you examine the properties. Are these co interior angles? Are they vertically opposite angle? Based on the angle that we are required <laughs> to find, angle B, D, E. So it's B, D, E. Okay. Yes. Yes. You so, know, that one almost got me because I was looking in another direction. Me we too. We have to pay attention. Right. Thank you for that. Careful. Yes. Read a question yes, thanks. carefully. <laughs> Right, and so pay attention to the diagram. Go ahead. So, yes. are these angles at a point? Are they vertically opposite? Mm -hmm. Are they corresponding mm -hmm. angles? And we are asked to find angle B D, D E, e. which would be this angle right here. And those two are co interior angles, meaning they are supplementary, mm -hmm. meaning they add up to 180, 180 degrees. degrees. And if we know that one angle is already 40, 40 degrees, degrees, then we can just carry out a subtraction. subtraction yes. And our answer would have been okay, would have been. 140 degrees and of course this is one of the questions that would not take us much time less than a minute okay good and so we come back to question 14 right so on the multiple choice if you notice a lot of work is being done with the right angle triangle mm -hmm. in relation to trig ratios trigonometrical ratios right mm -hmm. So in this case, they say, give us the diagram and yes. the value of tan, tan 180, 180 subtracting x, x is equal to, wow. All right. So we are only given x on the diagram. But we also know. But they are telling us that we need to find the tan of the angle 180 subtracting x. Mm -hmm. Where does that angle fit? It would fit all at B. It will be at angle A, a B, C. C. Reason? Angle A, B, C. Because at angle B, um, that would be on a straight line. That would be 180 degrees. Right. So we okay. have two angles right there. Yes. And we know that one is x. Yes. They did not tell us 40 degrees, 90 That's degrees, right. 30 That's degrees. Right. It's x degrees. X, yes. Right. So we know that 180 subtracting yes, mm -hmm. subtracting x degrees would be the value of the angle at A, B, C. Good, good, good. B um, based on the information, we know that that is the angle of focus. We can speak about see it the same trig ratio. If we know that that is the angle of focus, then what would be um, represented at BC? What would be at AC? What would be at a B. Right. As so, it relates to the angle of focus. Good. Yes. No. The right angle is right there. Mm -hmm. It means therefore that at B C is the hypotenuse being formed right here. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So we have the hypotenuse. We have that would be what adjacent the angle of focus. And of course we have the angle that is um, opposite. So tan opposite the, tan would be opposite over divided by or divided by the adjacent, which would of course it would be C um, B B opposite divided by, by the, the adjacent. adjacent. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come a long way this morning, and we have to we have looked at the trigonometry and we have looked at geometry. We have come We've to, the, come end of to the, the end of the session and you can watch a repeat of this lesson on JNN at 5 p.m. And for the other lesson, you can access one spot media video on the demand. Class time continues tomorrow with English language. If you are away from your TV, you may watch the lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or one spot media. So it's bye for now. Remember to keep washing your hands, wear your mask, sanitize, and keep your distance.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.